Hi guys, Papa here. Today I want to talk to you about an invasive species of arachnid or spider called the Joro spider that's taken over northeast Georgia and will take over the rest of the southeastern United States. I'm going to tell you all about the Joro spider and what we as individual homeowners and landowners can do to control, not eliminate, but control the Joro spider. So here we go. Here's the Joro female hanging in her nest the way she always does upside down with her black legs stuck out up and down making this kind of H shaped and you can always recognize her by this. Here's a close up of the back of the Joro spider female. Um, this female, the yellow part of her body is about a half inch long. Notice the main yellow banana shape and look of the body with the dark gray stripes on it. This is how they look in about the size of them uh, by about September, uh, late September or October when they're really getting big and, and laying eggs, get full of eggs and getting ready to lay eggs. Very conspicuous in the woods. Uh, the only native spider I know of that looks similar to this is our what, what I call a riding spider, and he always makes this zigzag line uh, in his web that you can tell from the Joro. Here's the belly of the female Joro spider. It's very conspicuous. The, the big red patch at the base of the abdomen, thorax, whatever you call that, is very obvious in the woods and easy to identify. Uh, so you have no trouble identifying this Joro spider. So where did the Joro spider came from? The Joro spider is native to Asia. That would be China, Japan, Taiwan, that general area. And it came into the United States by accident, as so many exotic pests do. It first arrived where the blue circle is, in uh, plus or minus, generally speaking, uh, in Madison County, Georgia. And it spread at least to the area that's delineated by the red circle, maybe further, maybe not quite that much. Uh, the Joro spider is spreading rapidly, and it's spreading most rapidly to the south and the east because that's downwind, but it's also spreading in every other direction fairly quickly. In our neck of the woods, uh, northeast Georgia, we start seeing Joro spider webs Oh, about July the 4th, the 4th of July, so that's an easy way to remember it. And from that time on, uh, we see more and more new Joro spider webs and Joro spiders. The Joro spiders start off pretty small around the 4th of July, but they just keep getting bigger and bigger. And then by about Labor Day, the females are maybe a quarter of an inch to half an inch long, and we start seeing little tiny male spiders in the nest with the females so we know mating is going on uh, from about plus or minus Labor Day. Um, and then the females get bigger and fatter as the season progresses. Then by about the frost, which around here is about the second or third week of November, the Joros, uh, we, don't, we don't see any more Joros in the woods. The Joro spiders love to put their webs around the edge of your yard or the edge of a field or pasture, right where the woods are, that, that edge effect. They like to put their webs uh, on your house, uh, in the shrubbery that's around your house, and those are all prime habitats, but they also will put their, uh, their webs all through the woods. Uh, those are the woods are just not his preferred habitat. It's funny because if you kill a Joro uh, web and a spider that's in a particular good habitat place, like around the edge of your yard or on the on in the shrubbery around your house, a day or two later there'll be another Joro that will take up that space uh, because it's really good habitat for catching bugs. Just like a fisherman knows that. You catch a bass out off of a point, underwater point, and then um, sometime later you can go back and catch another bass right there because it's really good habitat. That's why it's always important when you kill a Joro in these areas to totally wipe out their nest, their web, because 
Uh, another Joro is going to try to take the place uh, in that great habitat. And if they can use somebody else's web, they will do it. So let's make them work hard and build their own nests. So why should we go out there and kill the Joro spider? He's just a part of nature. That sounds pretty good, but the problem is this. The Joro spider is adapted to Asia. He, he has evolved with all the other species in Asia. He has critters that prey on him, on him uh, to keep his population in check, like diseases and also birds that maybe prey on the uh, Joro spider, just like our summer tanager preys on wasps here. But when uh, the Joro spider gets established here in the United States, he has no pests because none of the native bugs around here recognize him at all as prey. The birds don't recognize him as prey. The diseases won't infect him. Our native diseases won't infect him because they don't recognize him. So his population is going to explode and expand and he's going to push out other spiders uh, out of the habitat and take over the habitat um, as has happened many times in the past. Think about, and biologists believe that eventually the Jural population uh, here in the United States will stabilize and, and be reduced. That may be true, but I think there's a very long term uh, thing that's going to happen. Uh, it could take thousands of years or we just don't know. Let's look at the fire ant situation. Fire ants came over from Africa, I believe. Uh, they've been in this country for maybe a hundred years and I know from my property the only way that I can keep the fire ant population down is by putting out poison every single time that I mow, which is once a week in the growing season. So it is okay to kill Joros. You should go out there and aggressively kill them. And in a minute I'm going to tell you how to do that. Joro spiders are like other spiders, they're not aggressive and they won't bother you if you don't bother them. The problem is if you've got 5,000 of them in the woods, you're going to run into them and then they're going to bite you or sting you or whatever they do. I think they bite you, but I don't really know. Uh, how bad is the bite? I can't, I don't know from personal experience, but Grammy knocked her hand into one by accident and it bit her and her hand swelled up quite a bit. It was very painful and that soreness and pain lasted for about a week before it went down. So we don't need that kind of aggravation, especially happening to us, uh, even if it's by accident, happening to us on a regular basis, especially our young children, because we don't know how what the effect is on young kids. Grammy and I have been aggressively killing Jural spiders for the, this has been the second growing season that we've done it. We have a trail around our property and we have edge around openings. We go out and police them, oh, about every other day or so. We have killed this growing season, you know, since about the 4th of July when we first started noticing Joros. We have killed easily 2,000 Joros. That shows you how many there are and right now on our six and a half acre piece of land, I would just about guarantee there's probably, uh, there are probably 500 of them uh, out there that we haven't gotten. Uh, I'm not 100% sure about this, but I know most spiders uh, can lay 100 to maybe 1,000 or even 10,000 eggs in a batch. You know, if even 1% uh, of those eggs hatch, you can see it just takes a small handful of Joro females to repopulate a six and a half acre wood in a minute. So this is going to be an ongoing problem. Um, the best way to approach it is to go out there regularly uh, from July the 4th through frost and smack them. And I'm going to tell you how to do that in just a second. Uh, the most effective uh, fight against the Joro spider to control them is a regular routine of going out there and killing them. Um, if you don't have a regular routine, you turn your back for two, three days, a week, a month, and they're going to be back just as thick as they ever were. So get ready. I'm going to show you the way that Grammy and I have learned to kill these boogers. Ant and roach spray will kill Joral spiders no matter how big they are. Um, 
and it works great for any nests that are down low. Wasp and hornet spray is great for any Joro spider nests that are up high, and they do go up to about 20 feet high, so this uh, long shot wasp and hornet spray will get them up there. But the problem with roach and hornet spray is that you're shooting poisons all over your property. Eh, that doesn't bother some people, but it really bothers me and Grammy. We don't like these to be spraying poisons, and there's so many Joros in the woods, it takes a lot of spray. So we found alternate methods, and this is killer tool number one. See all that gross stuff on there? That's Joro web. Fly swatter is your best friend for killing jorals. If they're within reach, maybe six feet or below the ground, when many, many of them are, you can swack them. You just carefully aim your sw fly swatter, take a deep breath and whack. You can feel when your fly swatter hits the joro's body. And I guarantee you, it just takes a small hit to kill them. Their bodies are very soft and easy to smash. So your fly swatter is going to be uh, a great tool for you. Hey, give each of the kids a fly swatter and go for it. Uh, so Grammy and I, when we go walking on the trail, we always take our fly swatter and we swat, uh, hunt. We swatted hundreds and hundreds of joros with the fly swatter. Uh, so what do you do? Oh, and also the uh, yeah. Um, what do you do about the ones that are higher than a fly swatter can reach? That's where this handy dandy special tool that you can only get in special specific places like every single grocery store on the continent and dollar store, the old broom. And what do you do? I can't show you with a real Joro because it's really hard to film. You just lift the broom up and you circle around. Uh, make a big circle around, make sure you've got the Joro spider in that circle. He gets hung up in his own web and you can bring him down to the ground and spot him easily or her i'm saying he but it's they're all hers and uh stomp on him that's a sure way of killing the joro so we use these tools uh to kill joros but like i said earlier the best defense uh, the best way to control joros is whatever tool you use whether it be spray or fly swatter or broom or something else tennis racket Badminton racket would be, might be fantastic, maybe better than fly swatter. Uh, the main uh, important ingredient in controlling Joros is a routine of going out there regularly and smacking them. Hey, make a game out of it. A lot of kids like to do that paintball stuff. Hey, uh, let's have the uh, Joro Olympics around our house. And remember, after you smack the Joro, always take down its web so that another Joro won't be able to use that web. If the web's full of bugs, that's extra food for the next Joro that's gonna jump into that slot, especially if it's a prime habitat slot. So I hope this video has been helpful to you guys and given you some information that you can use in your battle against the oncoming Joro spider tidal wave if you happen to be in the southeastern United States. Uh, and if it has been useful to you, please give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, also, I love to get comments from you guys on anything that's on your mind. This channel is about uh, uh, van camping and about minimalist living in a tiny house. It's also about geology and plants too. So uh, give me comments on anything that's on your mind. doesn't have to be those topics. I love to hear from you and I'll always answer you back. So... Have a great day, my friends. Papa out.